Hey what's up guys it's Bakes and I'm back again for one of my collection update videos. This time it's my collection update for autumn 2023. If you have seen my collection update videos before, you guys know I try to do it all in one take, um, which I'm going to try and do again today. But they also take a little while to get through. Um, but today's collection update in particular, this is the biggest collection update video that I've ever done on my channel so far. I've got so many horror movies off to the side here. I've got a handful of albums that I'll go through towards the end and collectibles to go through as well. Um, so as I said, I'm going to try not to delay. We'll get straight into it. Um, I'll put chapters in the time bar below. So if you feel like skipping certain parts, go for it. But as I said, so many horror movies to get through. So as usual, we'll start with them, then the music and then collectibles. But just wanted to quickly get that out of the way. Let's get into the horror movies. So starting off with a movie that I have seen before but haven't watched since picking it up. So here we have Ready or Not. Um, a pretty popular movie from the year it came out, 2019. Um, I think a lot of people were caught off guard by how fun this movie was. And yeah, it really is a super fun movie. I've seen this one twice. As I said, not since picking it up. I'm really excited to give it a rewatch. Um, it's just a really cool horror comedy. Um, it's got a bit of action in there as well. Um, Samara Weaving does great as our lead in this one. Just a really cool movie. Um, a really cool twist at the end as well that I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, this is a fun watch. Excited to get back around to it. Um, next up, we have a French movie um, from 2018, I think. Um, and the movie's called Climax. Now, I feel like every man and their dog that has seen this movie love it. Um, I watched this for the first time about a week, uh, week ago. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, by all means, not a bad movie. I just feel like it wasn't really my thing. Um, it's about these group of dancers that, uh, you know, get together for these rehearsals or whatever. They throw a party and the drink ends up getting spiked. So they all start tripping and hallucinating and everything that comes along with being spiked. And, uh, yeah, this movie is like a descent into madness. Um, it's quite a niche movie. It's not going to be for everybody. And I can see why people do like it. But as I said, um, just wasn't quite my thing. Um, but yeah, um, it was a little bit for me a struggle to get through with the subtitles and not really vibing with the story, but it was okay. Um, next up is a movie that I've never seen before, haven't watched it. Um, the Offering, it's still wrapped. I don't know anything about this one. Um, it's from last year. Um, I'm not really going to read the back, I kind of want to go into it blind, but The Offering, let me know if it's any good. I'll probably watch it soon. One that I have done a review of though, so if you want to know my thoughts of this one in deeper detail, check out my review. But here we have Relic. Um, I really like this movie. I've seen it a handful of times before. Um, it's an Australian movie. If you like The Barbadook, I can see you enjoying this movie as well. I see a lot of similarities to it. Um, it's like this generation, uh, three generations of this family. Um, they go over to see the grandmother who is previously been missing she comes back and things are a little bit different there's something a little bit dark and sinister going on um yeah i really enjoy this movie it's a bit slow but uh yeah it's been a favorite of mine a modern favorite really like the relic um going from a pretty serious movie to one that just takes the piss shark octopus i'm not gonna dwell on this one too much it's a shark cross an octopus Killing people, pretty much what you expect. Um, put it on late, have a laugh, have a drink with it. Um, a bit of fun. I couldn't remember if I had seen that movie before re-watching it, but um, I don't think it really matters. As I said, it's pretty goofy. Now this one, I was pretty happy about finding. It is the entire Fran Fran Phantasm franchise. Um, I was super happy to find this because we do not have any of the Phantasm movies with a good release here in Australia. Um, this isn't even from our region, this is region 1, um, but I've got a region 3 player so that's fine. Um, I was just super happy to find this so I could get all 5 movies. Um, the one thing that's shit about this set is that all 5 discs are piled up on top of each other so if you want to get one you have to lift the others off. Uh, it's garbage. Just put the things in where you can flip it over. Um, yeah, I thought that was shit. But either way, since the Phantasm movies have never had a good release here in Australia, um, 
I've actually never seen them before picking up this set. Um, I know, true horror fan. But uh, a lot of people have said that this is one of the most underrated horror movie franchises out there. Um, so I was super excited to get into these. I've seen all of them bar five. And so far, I'm not in love with any of them, really. I feel like they've progressively gotten worse. Um, the first one's my favourite, but even then, I wasn't completely sold on it. Had its moments. Um, I think the Toll Man is, is cool. He's a really cool villain. Um, I like the effects and everything, but I'm not sold on it, so maybe I just need to sit on the franchise for a while, come back later, maybe find a new appreciation for it, but not sold yet. Um... Another movie that I didn't love, which is unfortunate, it's called Feast. It was a first time watch. Um, everything that I have heard about this movie though is that it's a lot of fun, it's a creature feature. Two things that are right up my alley. Um, but honestly, I found this one to be pretty boring. It's only an hour and a half, but yet it just was a struggle to see it through. Just didn't enjoy this one. Um, also, by the way guys, I am sick, so if you can hear it in my voice and I sound like shit, that's because I feel like shit, so <laughs> um, if I'm coughing or, as I said, just sound nasally, bear with me. Of course it has to be when I'm going through, as I said, my biggest collection update. Um, this is a movie that I've seen a few times in stores. Um, I was super excited to check this out. It's called Fear Farm. Um, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping. Um, honestly, this movie was a little bit underwhelming. But by all means, not bad. Um, it's like this group of friends who go into a haunted corn maze. Um, one of those Halloween attraction things that are, is run by this family. Um, the PH in farm comes into play as the twist. Um, I thought the twist, honestly, was a little bit um, underwhelming, almost cringe. But um, by all means, as I said, wasn't a bad movie. I know there's a second one, which um, now that I've seen this one, I'm not going to be rushing out to get it, but... Um, I think I do eventually want to see it. Uh, next up is a movie that is garbage. <laughs> um, gothic. I seen this just the once after I picked it up. Um, yeah, this movie was bad. Um, yeah, I, I don't even really remember what happened. This, uh, this movie was shit. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there. That was garbage. Um, a movie that, a more modern movie now. Um, I heard a lot of people say that they really enjoyed this one. It's very dark, very bleak. Um, a film from New Zealand, and it's called Coming Home in the Dark. Um, yeah, the introduction to this movie is very bleak, it's very dark, um, and it pretty much sets the pace for the rest of the movie. Um, it is, in ways, a hard movie to get through just because it is so bleak. Um... But again, this one wasn't really for me. Um, by all means, not a bad movie at all. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like I wasn't sold on it. Um, the start, the, as I said, the opening is very bleak. Um, it's a bit of a hard watch to begin with. But as it just went on, I was losing more and more interest. But coming home in the dark, um, check it out. It might be your thing. Next up is another movie that I have heard nothing about, haven't watched it. So we'll make this one quick, Escape the Field. Um, I know nothing about it. If you have seen it, let me know if it's any good. I'll eventually watch it, but yeah. Next up is VHS 99. Now I'm so happy that this eventually got released on DVD. I don't own Shudder, but um, as you can tell, Shudder have been releasing their movies into physical media as of um, the past few years, I think. Um, which is really good because I hate when Netflix release an original horror movie and you can't pick it up uh, and add it to the collection. That just sucks. But I like that Shudder do that. And I was super happy that they released this because I'm a big fan of VHS 1 and 2. Um, I've also got VHS Viral, but that one is pretty shit. Um, but I'm a big fan of 1 and 2 and I watch them pretty uh, frequently. So I was kind of just in a VHS fix, you know, I just wanted to see a new VHS movie. I know that there's this one and 94, um, but this one filled the void. By all means, it is not very good at all. There's one story that I did actually enjoy. It was that um, uh, frat initiation thing that I, I actually enjoyed that story. I think it was the second one, but overall this one wasn't great. But as I was saying, I think I just liked that I could eventually... See a new VHS movie, so 
Uh, next up is a movie that I only just watched today. It's called Play Dead. Um, again, this one was a little bit underwhelming, unfortunately. I was actually kind of excited to see a movie where this girl lays on a table and she's in a morgue and, you know, she is trying to figure out a way to not get cut open for this autopsy. You know, I thought that's what it was going to be and it's sort of all in one location, which it is. It all takes place in this morgue. Um, but I thought pretty much the whole movie she was going to be on the table, but it turns into a cat and mouse, basically. And that's where it sort of started to lose my interest. Um, my favourite thing about this movie was, surprisingly, Jerry O'Connell. And I don't mean that like he's a bad actor or anything, but um, he was like surprisingly intimidating in this movie as the villain. Um, but again, this movie was a little bit underwhelming. Pretty fresh in my mind, as I said, because I watched it today. Um, a classic that I've never seen before, so thought I'd pick it up. The Innocents. Um, as I said, never seen it before, but I know it's a classic, so got it. Um, let me know your thoughts on that one, if you have seen it. Um, a vampire movie that a lot of people like. Never really been my thing, but I got 30 Days of Night. Um, I really like the setting of Alaska and how takes place on these 30 days that are all in darkness. Um, it makes sense for a vampire movie um, and all these vampires to be there. I actually really like that. Um, however, sometimes with these action horror movies, they're just not really my thing. And um, I just feel like there's too much action in this one, but whatever. Um, I'm trying to keep good pace with this because as I said, there are so many horror movies to go through. I'm about to move the second pile over now. Um, this one I really enjoyed, and I was so happy I enjoyed it, because I love alien horror movies, but they can be really iffy. But here we have Dark Skies. Um, for ages I've been seeing this one in stores, and it's always, like, really cheap, and I've never jumped to getting it, because I've always just thought, you know, I'll get it another time, just because it's so cheap, it's not going anywhere. And also, with those cheap movies, they normally mean that they're not that good. But I actually really enjoyed this one, and it was, like, also really creepy at parts. Um, I really enjoyed Dark Skies. Um, one of my favourite alien horror movies now. I actually, I really enjoyed it. Um, next up, we got a William Friedkin-directed movie, The Guardian. Um, this one was okay. Again, not really my thing. Um, like, almost like a killer plant movie. Um, really unique. Um, by all means, not bad. Just not really my thing. But, uh, cool one to pick up. Um, one again, I have seen. It's only from this year, actually. I've, it's still wrapped now. We have Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. Um, yeah, so a movie from this year. Um, as I said, I'll eventually give it a rewatch. Um, watching it in cinemas, I thought... The first two acts were really, really good. And by all means, the third act wasn't bad. I just feel like the twist was underwhelming. I don't know what I wanted to happen. I just feel like what happened didn't hit the mark that it needed to. And I feel like I've heard a lot of people sort of agree with my opinions. I feel like the acting in this one is really good. The writing is really good. It just comes down to... What eventually ends up happening, um, it just feels a little bit underwhelming. I, as I said, I don't know what I wanted to happen. I just feel like it wasn't it. Um, but either way, I'm excited to give this a rewatch. Um, yeah. Uh, the reason why I got so many um, more horror movies and albums and all that over these three months is because uh, we had my birthday. So a lot of people hooking me up with some good shit. So thank you, everyone. That watches my videos that also got me stuff. Um, here we have Follow Me, which I was actually surprised with this movie. I did enjoy this one for the most part. Um, it started off a little bit cringy. Um, I thought, oh, here we go, we're getting into one here. Uh, but it turned out to actually be not that bad. Um, you know, it, it was actually pretty fun. By all means, it's not doing anything overly different. Um, it's like this vlogger who takes his friends to this, um, I think it's like Russian escape room, and everything isn't as it seems, um, but it was fun, so, uh, but it wasn't a home run, but did enjoy it. 
Um, another one here that I'll quickly go through. Haven't seen it, don't know anything about it. It's still wrapped. You Won't Be Alone. Um, yeah. As I said, if you know anything about this movie or any of the movies that I haven't seen, let me know your thoughts of them in the comments below, but I'll eventually get around to watching that. Um, here's a popular one that a lot of people will say, how did you not have in your collection? Sinister. Um, I have seen Sinister a handful of times, just never owned it. Um, and to be completely honest, I don't think I like this movie as much as a lot of people do. Everyone says that this is the scariest modern horror movie or one of the best modern horror movies. Um, I don't find it that scary. I find it a better movie than actually being scary. Um, but even then, I, I don't think it's a great movie either. Um, it's a cool little mystery, honestly, but, um, yeah, I don't think I like it as much as a lot of people do. I won't go into the plot for this one because a lot of people would know it. Um, here we have an American werewolf in Paris. Um, I once heard someone say that this is just like an American werewolf in London, except in Paris. Um, yeah, right, this movie fucking, like, is pretty bad. Um... The werewolves look fucking terrible. Yeah, hang on. You're trying to tell me that's a... We it looks like a fucking panther. It looks like the fucking um, statue from Marvel's Black Panther. Um, this movie is, like, really bad. It's hard to get through. Um, yeah, but I wanted to pick it up, add it to the collection. Um, yeah, I once heard someone say it's the exact same movie except in Paris. Um... Yeah, if American Werewolf in London was a shit movie, like, it's fucking bad. I, I don't know. I don't know how people can, like, genuinely enjoy American Werewolf in um, Paris. Here we have a movie that I know a lot of people do like, Triangle. Um, again, this was a first-time watch after picking it up. Um, I was a little bit let down by this one again. It feels like every movie here let me down. That's not the case at all. But um, I was a little bit let down by this one. Um, very unique. It's sort of like um, Happy Death Day and those movies where it's like, I like Groundhog Day, you know, going through the same thing over and over. It was interesting in that aspect, but um, I wasn't sold on the execution. But maybe I'll give it another crack further down the line. Um, uh, so we were talking before about bleak movies. This could be one of the bleakest fucking movies I've seen in a long time. However, it's also really fucking funny. Um, Silent Night. Um, I'm not going to go into what this movie is about because it gives away a lot of the plot. But this could be one of the most depressing movies you will fucking see. Um, but as I said, it's also really funny. It, it is a horror comedy. Um, honestly, mixed with a bit of drama and thriller as well. Um, I, yeah, this movie is so, like, it's so depressing, but it's a good watch. I actually really enjoyed this movie, and there's this one line in the movie that made me fucking piss myself, um, but again, if I talk about that line, it's gonna give away this movie, but, um, Silent Night, I did enjoy that one. Um, another one that I thought wasn't too bad, um, it was a first time watch, uh, Deliver Us From Evil. Um, yeah, this one wasn't too bad. It's got my boy Eric Banner, Australian actor in it. Um, by all means, again, nothing totally unique or anything that we haven't seen before, but for what it was, I didn't mind this one. Um, another Shudder original or Shudder exclusive, whatever they're calling them. The Amusement Park. Um, this one is marketed as... Um, George A. Romero's Lost Movie, or Unfinished Movie, um, I can't remember what exactly it is, but it was, I, I think it was just a movie that was lost and maybe never finished, um, I'm not even sure if I would call this a horror movie, it is, it's a little bit bleak, it's a little bit depressing, it's basically a commentary on how we treat old people and, um, elderly people in our society and how they fit into it. And it is a little bit depressing with our lead and um, things that happened to him. But unfortunately, this movie, uh, its execution just isn't really up my alley. Um, I was a little bit bored by this one. And um, 
it's only 54 minutes. It should fly by, but it dragged a little bit. Um, it's more of a commentary than anything else. Um, I don't know. I can, I know a lot of people do like this movie, just wasn't really my thing. But a cool movie to pick up, nevertheless. Um, not really a horror movie, but I do keep it in my horror collection. The Addams Family. Um, if you watched my last collection update video, I picked up Addams Family Values. Um, that is a movie that um, I watched a lot when I was younger and forgot all about it. And I was like, okay, if I have that movie, I better pick up the first Adam's Family, which I don't like as much as Adam Fa Adam's Family Values, but still a cool movie. Um, here we have David Bowie in The Hunger. Uh, this was a first time watch. It is a vampire movie. Um, for me, it feels like a little bit more style over substance. This wasn't really my thing. Um, it's sort of like this romantic sexual vampire movie um yeah not really my thing but again not a not a bad movie just not quite up my alley uh next up uh another australian movie um called dying breed it's about these uh group of friends people whatever associates they go out to find um the ex extinct tasmanian tiger um, and I thought it was going to be a creature feature. It ends up turning into one of those backwards slasher, um, inbred hillbilly sort of things. Um, this movie was okay. Um, didn't thrill me. What I really liked it was just seeing um, Lee Whannell acting again. Um, if you don't know Lee Whannell, he did the first. He directed the first Saw movie with James Wan. Um, he later did other movies like Upgrade and The Invisible Man. Um, it was just cool seeing him on screen again. Uh, so I enjoyed that. But otherwise, this movie, I would have preferred it to almost stay like a creature feature sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, wasn't bad, but just very very average. Um, a movie from last year. Again, I have seen this movie, just haven't watched it since getting it. Bones and All. Um, a lot of people really like this movie, and I do also really, really like this movie. It was just short of making my top 10 um, horror movies of last year. Um, I just don't feel like I loved it as much as other people. I really liked the um, road adventure sort of feel of it. Um, I did like the romance as well. I just feel like it was a, maybe just a little bit too slow. Um, there were some things in there that I feel like could have been taken out. Um, the cannibal sort of stuff in here was actually really creepy and really cool um but as i said it's uh, just with the runtime of it and the balance of it you know being on the road and romance and almost like a coming of age film as well um i just feel like a lot of the horror and um you know cool stuff involving eating other people and cannibals and everything was sort of put a little bit too far to the side but by all means i still really enjoy this movie as i said fell just short of my top 10 from last year but i'm excited to re-watch this one actually uh, might go up again bones and all i just rethought of that opening scene uh where she's at the sleepover with the other girls that is fucking awesome gonna move this other pile over now as i said i have a shit ton of horror movies to go through um another one haven't seen before know nothing about it so let me know the Last right is it any good? Um, it just looks like a generic possession exorcism movie, but might be something different. Let me know. Um, another Shutter original or exclusive, whatever they want to call them. Again, know nothing about it. Haven't watched it. Scare me. Is it any good? Let me know. Um, one from a couple of years ago, 2020. 2021? I don't know. I think 2021. Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, have seen this one. I went to the drive-ins to watch this one a while back. Haven't watched it since getting it. I'm really excited to re-watch this one because by far this is my least favourite of the three Conjuring movies. Um, it's disappointing because I remember this movie not being bad. I just really enjoy the first and second Conjuring movie. I just thought this one was a considerable step down from the first two but um i just i do want to give it a rewatch and just see if you know something maybe just didn't click the first time around 
um, you know, a really cool concept of like, uh, this guy who is using the excuse in court, you know, the devil made me do it. Um, really cool concept. And I really liked it, the opening to this movie and everything. Um, but as I said, I think I just need to give it a second chance. Um, if you want to know my thoughts on the first two Conjuring movies, I've done reviews of them both. So go and check that out. Um, another movie from this year. So sort of like knock at the cabin. Um, saw this one earlier in the year. Excited to give it a rewatch. Um, Cocaine Bear. Um, kind of almost more of an action movie than a horror movie. Um, I thought this one was pretty good. I liked it more than knock at the cabin. Um, oddly enough, I kind of just wish it had more bear in it. You know, it's called cocaine bear. You think, um, it would be, it's, you almost wish it was crazier than what it is. Um, the, by far the best scene in this movie is where the bear attacks the ambulance. That one on the back. Um, I just wanted more from this movie, but by all means, not bad. Um, it's a, it's a fun movie. Uh, this movie, I'm so happy finally got a release on physical media. Pearl. Pearl. Uh, this was my number 10 favorite horror movie of last year. And um, in that video when I spoke about this one as my number 10, I said how it didn't get a release all of last year in cinemas. Um, and I wasn't even sure if it was going to get a physical release. I imagined it would, but I had no clue when we were going to see this movie here in Australia. Um, the reason why I did see it last year was I watched it online. Um, I'm so happy this got a release. It came out in cinemas, I want to say February, March, um, this year here in Australia, which I just thought was crazy, just super late. Um, but I'm so happy it got a physical release and it is beautiful. I love the red, but I'm getting off topic pill. I haven't watched it since, uh, picking it up again, but I'm super excited. This is probably the one in this whole pickup that I'm most excited to rewatch because um, even though it was my number 10 from last year, I think it could be higher, um, just the more I've thought about it. Um, I really loved Pearl, so excited to pick this one up again. All right, um, this next one was actually another really cool pickup. Um, it is the third Saturday in October, part one and part five. Um, now, if you do not know anything about these movies, you're probably going... Why is it a set of part one and part five? There is no part two, three, and four. Um, these movies look like retro slashes, but they're both made in 2022. Um, they're meant to be throwbacks, and I think the whole concept behind it was you're meant to watch part five before you watch part one. And the concept is it's meant to be like when, um, back in the day when you turn on the TV and you turn it on halfway through one of those late um, in the franchise slasher sequels and then you go, oh, what the fuck's this? And you go back to the first one and then go, oh, this is how it all started. So that's what I did. I watched part five before I watched part one. Um, sorry, I sort of rambled there. These movies were okay. Um, I liked part five more than part one. I think it was just because um, you see how sort of the franchise would unravel, you know, it starts to get a little bit more goofy, a little bit more over the top, the first one's a bit more grounded, um, but I liked the goofiness, and I liked the fun of part five, so, um, yeah, I thought the whole concept is interesting, I feel like the, the concept is better than the execution, but by all means, not terrible movies, um, yeah, sorry, as I said, guys, I'm, like, super sick, so, um, when I'm talking at the moment, I'm sort of rambling on and on and um, I'm starting to feel like I'm not making sense anymore but um, either way almost done with the horror movies still going half an hour fuck me alright um, The Empty Man um, this has slowly become a modern cult movie a lot of people really enjoy this one um, I watched this one twice um, it's, a, it's a long movie it is two hours and 15, um, and it is a little bit slow, um, you know, you don't feel every minute of it, but it is a little bit of a slow burn, um, a very unique movie, it's not going to be for everyone, um, I can see how a lot of people enjoyed this one, but, um, I was just sort of, yeah, on it. I thought it was okay, um, next up, I picked up a documentary called 
Not Quite Hollywood. It is a documentary on Australian exploitation and horror movies and everything like that. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, you know, I sometimes with horror movies, you want... Um, horror movies, documentaries, you want them to be a little bit longer so they pack more and more in. Um, this one is an hour and... Yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I wish there was a little bit more in there, but... By all means, for what it was, um, I did enjoy it. Alright, next up. House 2. Um, I picked this one up um, sort of recently. Um, I went back and watched the first House movie, which is a movie that I've seen more times than what I actually thought I had. Um, I've actually recorded a review for House um, that will be up soon, probably after this one. But House 2, I picked up. What a disappointing sequel. This movie was so fucking bad. Like, it was, it's more, like, the first house is a um, horror comedy, but this one just shoves the comedy down your throat, and it's not funny. Um, oh, this movie was a pain to get through. I fucking hated House 2. And I think House 3 and 4 just only get worse. Um, this was a movie I was excited to see last year, but just never got the chance to. Studio 666. Um... I didn't have high hopes for this movie, um, however, I was just excited because I love horror movies and I enjoy the Foo Fighters. Um, I wouldn't say they're one of my favourite bands of all time, but um, I enjoy their music and I thought it was going to be fun to see them in a horror movie and it was. Uh, this movie probably is just more enjoyable because it is the Foo Fighters and it's just fun seeing them interact as a band in this horror movie set environment. Um, the movie's not great. But by all means, it's fun. Um, so I would say I enjoyed this one. Um, another Australian horror movie, Carnifex, um, from 2022, so last year as well. Um, I saw a few reviews on this one, actually. I saw that most people didn't enjoy this one. And by all means, this movie, again, isn't great. Um, kind of average. But this is kind of what I sort of wanted from Dying Breed. It's about these group of environmental people, whatever they do, they go and track the Australian wild, um, wildlife, and they come across this animal called the Carnifex that is meant to have gone extinct. Um, really cool design um, for the creature. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually based on an actual extinct Australian animal, but um, the first half of this movie was just nothing, which really takes the movie down because the second half where we start to interact with this creature, that scene where it's crawling up the tree with the goat was actually kind of creepy. Um, but the first half of this movie is where it really drops the ball because nothing is happening and it's honestly kind of boring. But um, the second half definitely cleans it up a little bit. Um, another movie from last year that I really wanted to see um, but just missed out on, however, it Probably wouldn't have made my top 10, but I did enjoy it. Um, Hatching. This movie is from Finland. Uh, I thought this movie was pretty solid. Um, I did enjoy it more than, you know, a lot of the other ones I've listed here. As I said, I've, I kind of sound like I've hated every movie so far. Um, it's about this girl who, um, she's sort of depressed and she has a very, um, unstable home life, and, um, her family aren't really loving. She comes across this egg, and the egg eventually hatches into this weird bird creature, and I'm gonna sort of leave it there. Um, a really cool creature feature, um, you know, the bird's design, as I said, it's like this bird creature thing was really cool. Um, just again, the execution, it wasn't a home run, but by all means, enjoyable enough. Um... Another Shutter exclusive, Tigers Are Not Afraid. Um, I heard a lot of people praise this movie, and again, kind of um, along the lines of uh, Climax, where I definitely see how a lot of people enjoy this movie, and by all means, it's not a bad movie, it just more so wasn't really my thing. Um, I probably enjoyed this one more than Climax. Um, one thing that was off was the subtitles. Um, this is a movie from... Spain? French? I don't know. It's got two there. It's got Spain and France, but whatever. Um, the subtitles were off in this movie. Like, words were misspelt and, like, out of order. 
Um, it was giving me, like, fucking a headache going through it. Um, but by all means, this movie wasn't bad. Um, just, again, maybe not quite my thing. A few more to go. I'm so sorry, guys, that this is taking a little bit longer. Um, or maybe you guys are happy that it's taking a while. I like when I'm watching collection update videos on other people's channel and they go for a long time because it just means more movies. But here we have Nightbreed. Um, I enjoyed the first half of this movie, but then when it started to just go on and on, and uh, honestly, the end, I don't really remember that well. I think I kind of fell asleep. It was a first-time watch. Um, it was okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys. As I said, it doesn't help also that I'm sick. Like, my throat is fucking killing me. Um, one that I'm surprised I didn't have in my collection, Day of the Dead. Um... By all means, this is going to sound like blasphemy. I'm not the biggest fan of this movie. Um, I know George A. Romero, one of the greatest horror directors of all time, and the Dead trilogy and the Dead series of films. Um, a lot of people love them. Um, this just happens to not be my favourite. As I said, I was just surprised I didn't have it in my collection. I went to actually watch it one day, and I couldn't find it. And I was like, do I even have this movie? And it's so bizarre. I've never really had that happen to me before where... I wasn't, sh I thought I had a movie and just didn't have it, but Day of the Dead, everyone knows this movie, um, yeah, and last horror movie, um, I've done a review on this one, I think, yeah, it would have been the video that came out before this one, Attack the Block, um, I was super caught off guard with how much I really enjoyed this movie, just balances so many different genres and elements, and they all work in the movie's favour, this was just tons of fun. It's basically like this group of teenage hooligans that run the streets at night and, you know, sort of commit these small crimes and just run amok. And these aliens crash land in their neighborhood and start trying to make their way into this tower and they're trying to protect their building. Uh, yeah, this movie was a lot of fun. All right. Whew, 37 minutes. That is usually the length of just one video. But so far, we're only through the horror movies. We're going to move on to the music now. Going to not delay any longer. Let's just get into it. Uh, the first three albums that I have here are albums from this year. So we'll start off with them. The first one is So Much for Stardust by Fall Out Boy. Um, if you watch my music content here on my channel, you guys know, because um, I've probably said it so many times before, Fall Out Boy are one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, I'm a... More so bigger fan of their earlier stuff, you know, from Under the Cork Tree to Folia Do. But, um, <coughs> sorry, anything they put out, um, I always try and listen to and check out. Um, I actually enjoyed this one for the most part. Um, uh, it came out in March, so a little time since then, it's sort of weared off a little bit, but, um, by all means, um, I think this album is pretty solid, so, yeah. Um, an Australian band up next, um, they're pretty new, so I'm sure not a lot of people know of them, but hopefully I can put you on their radar, Red Hook, um, and this album's co called Postcard from a Living Hell, um, how would I describe Red Hook? They're like a mix between Stand Atlantic and, like, I don't know, something a bit new metal, maybe Spirit Box, um, I know Spirit Box aren't new, um, new metal, but... Um, yeah, I'd say like Stand Atlantic with Spirit Box. Um, this album is, I've said so many times, like a fast food album. This is a good example. You know, if you listen to it too much, it's probably not good for you. But to change it up a little bit, um, it can be fun. It can be something different. Um, yeah, this one was a, this is their debut album. This was a really cool debut. Um, next up and last album from this year, I've got more albums to go through, but last one from this year, we have Amity Affliction and their new album, Not Without My Ghosts. Um, honestly, I was a little bit disappointed by this album. Um, obviously, I like it enough to pick it up. You guys know horror movies, I'll pretty much pick up anything. Music, I have to actually really enjoy the album. Um, I enjoyed it enough to pick it up, but from out of all of um, Amity Affliction's um, newer albums, uh, let's say from this album, Back Five, uh, this is probably the weakest one that they've put out in a while, um, don't get me wrong, there's songs that I like, Show Me Your God 
It's Hell Down Here, Fade Away. Um, there's a few uh, other tracks through the middle that are all right. But overall, I was a little bit um, underwhelmed by this one. Um, and now moving on to albums that aren't from this year, just more sort of random stuff. Uh, we got an album by the band Sticky Fingers called Yours to Keep. Um, I always liked this album, but I didn't come back to it too much. Um, but since picking it up, I've almost had this album on replay. It's just super vibey, super cool. Um, it's like indie rock. Um, yeah, just so many cool songs on here. Um, groovy songs on here. There's like a good balance of different vibes, um, but all suits so well. Um, yeah, Yours to Keep by the band Sticky Fingers. Really enjoyed it. Um, an album that I wasn't sure if I could get into. It's not really my go-to genre of music, but I've said so many times before, I try not to pigeonhole myself into particular genres, um, but ended up really enjoying this one, um, Smithereen by Joji, um, man, this album's a mood, uh, this album is very, I feel like, personal and deep, um, yeah, I'm not gonna go too much into that sort of stuff, but, uh, this album really helped at times, uh, yeah, this new album's quite deep, um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it there, good album, I liked it. Um, I got The Police, Greatest Hits, um, The Police are one of my favourite throwback bands, um, I can say that because they were before my time, um, just, yeah, lots of their greatest hits on here, you got Roxanne, um, So Lonely, Message in a Bottle, um, Every Breath You Take. There's just so many jams on here. I'm going to leave it at that. An album from last year that I originally thought I didn't like, but just the more and more I listened to it, the more I went, okay, this is actually something I kind of vibe with. Um, you guys know I don't listen to rap too much, but this is one of the exceptions that I really enjoyed. Um, Melt My Eyes and See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Um, and actually in my last collection update video, I picked up his other album, Taboo, which I is one of my favorite rap albums um, of all time, honestly. Um, and I said that I had listened to this album, it just wasn't my thing. But as I said, since um, picking up Taboo and just listening to this one more, it grew on me and yeah, had to pick it up. Um, again, an artist that you might think is not really up my alley, but... Um, and another greatest hits album, uh, The Weeknd and The Highlights. Um, it's just a collection of The Weeknd's most popular and well-known songs. Um, but I really do enjoy The Weeknd, so this was a really good album to pick up. Um, here we have old Harold Styles and his debut album. Um, I really like this album. I also really like Fine Line. I feel like it's the better of the two that I own. Harry's House, his newest album, um, unfortunately, I honestly think isn't that good, and weirdly enough, he picked up a Grammy for it, um, you know, I just feel like out of the three albums, that one is easily the worst, but off topic, um, yeah, picked up this one, I enjoy his self-titled there. Um, this is an album I'm so happy I was able to get my hands on, I just feel like it's a super underrated and underappreciated modern uh, pop punk album, and that is Adornment by Grayscale. Um, Grayscale are one of those bands that do sort of more lean into the pop sounding side of things when it comes to their pop punk, but um, just really clean, really polished, um, and super enjoyable album. There is like no bad songs on this album, like all of them are at least decent, so had to pick up Adornment by Grayscale. And now I purposely saved this one for last. It was my second favorite album from last year. And for the whole reason why I didn't pick it up is because I couldn't find the deluxe edition anywhere. Um, I could find the standard edition, but I wanted the deluxe because it has an extra five songs and two of the extra five are a couple of my favorites on the album. So it was a must to pick up the deluxe. And it is 5 Seconds of Summer's 5 Sauce 5, with the 5 extra songs, which are Mood Swings, Flatline, Emotions, Bloodhound, and Tears. I have a story with this, so I had to pick it up online and 
get it brought in. Every time I had seen the deluxe edition, um, it had like in quotations next to it, um, I think it was called like the toll release. And I just sort of expected that it was going to be like the same width as like a normal album with maybe an extra couple of centimeters chucked on the top. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I won't, it probably won't be that big. Um, this is like the size of a fucking book and it is a book. Um, it's got like all of the songs and their lyrics and everything. And then it's got the disc in the back. Um, so when I got this in the mail, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Cause like, I, it was like too big to be an album. Um, I thought, do I do an unboxing because this is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, but thought I'll just leave it for the collection update. I know that was probably not the most interesting story, but yeah, no, I'm happy I finally got that. Now, moving on to the collectibles, we're about to finish here. Most of them are obviously horror related, but I got a few extra things as well. Um, they're off to the side, so just give me a second to grab a few. Alright, so we'll start off with the horror stuff. Um, picked up a Funko Pop. Um, you guys know I'm not crazy on going out and buying Funko Pops though. I have, um, you can't see them, but all lined up on the top of my shelf. Picked up this Leprechaun Funko Pop. Um, it says Special Edition. Um, the Special Edition and Standard were selling for the same price. And I actually preferred to pick up the standard because um, I just think he honestly looks better without the blood on him. Um, however, they were, were sold out of standard, so picked up this one. But either way, I've, I'm a big fan of the Leprechaun franchise, and I think he's a pretty cool villain, so I wanted to pick that up. Um, for my birthday, I got this Jason Voorhees lamp. However, there are no batteries in it at the moment. I actually only recently set this up um like a couple of days ago um so no batteries in it but the whole thing just lights up um it's actually pretty cool so hopefully i can find a good spot maybe in the back of my videos put it on something but um i got this stephen king uh history on himself and his books um haven't done much reading on this i've read like the first chapter um, I'll get more around to it. I'm not a big reader. <laughs> um, I'm not a good reader either. So, um, I'll sort of take my time on this one. Um, but I flipped through this pictures and everything of like, uh, some of the behind the scenes on his books and, um, adaptations on his books. So this should be pretty interesting. I'm excited to get into it. Um, just grabbing the rest of the stuff. Uh, about a week ago, um, went and saw this band live. It was the first time seeing this band live, and um, it is a band that's growing on me more and more over time. The band is slowly, slowly. Went and saw their Daisy Chain tour. So it's got the tour dates and cities on the back. An Australian band, um, you know, I don't think they've had much global success, but they're really just fucking good, and as I said, they're just growing on me more and more over time. Um, had to go to the merch stand and just pick up a shirt. Um, they were awesome. Uh, yeah, the show was really fucking good. And honestly, that's probably where I got sick just because I was in the mosh pit. Um, did one of the biggest fucking crowd surfs that I've done in my life ever. It was huge. It was fucking awesome. And lucky last, I went and saw Steve-O live. Steve-O, um, he's a fucking legend. Um, I love all of the Jackass movies and watching their stuff. Um, so I was so happy that his bucket list tour could come to Australia. Had to pick up his bucket list tour shirt at the merch stand. Really good quality, really good fit. And I also had to pick up both of his books. As I said, I'm not a big reader. Um, I haven't read this one yet. Um, I will get around to it. However, did read this one. It took me some time to get through. Um, no fault of the writing or the content in there. It was all really interesting. And for a book this thick, for me to get all the way through, it has to be doing something right. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this. So picked that one up as well. I left all the Stevo stuff to last because um, obviously this is a horror channel um, with a bit of music. So that sort of stuff could wait till the end, but I wanted to include it. So thank you for joining me for this collection update, guys. Um, 
almost 50 minutes. It's going to tick over to 50 eventually. Um, yeah, this video was so long. Hopefully you guys don't, um, you know, have anything against these longer videos because I'm sure eventually I'll have one like this again. As I said, I normally like watching them um, on other channels that I watch myself just because it just means more movies to go through and um, look at and hear people's opinions on. So hopefully you enjoy that too, guys. But um, all the support that you guys can give, I'd appreciate it. You know, liking this video, subscribing if you're not already subscribed, um, or just commenting, you know, those movies that I said I haven't seen. Let me know your thoughts on them if you have, or even the ones that I have seen. Uh, just, yeah, go crazy, guys. But thank you for joining me. Sorry again that I was sick and my voice sounds like shit. Um, but I'll see you for another video soon, guys. Peace.